Doctor. All right, veterinarian Sandy Sachuk from the UW School of Veterinary Medicine is here. Good to see you. Nice to be here. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Yes. We're going to take your calls starting uh, right now, so give us a call 270-9933. New Year's are on the corner. Oh, yes. And I have two resolutions that I hope that pet owners uh, will make. One's for cats, one's for dogs. The one for cat is, cats is to not have owners free choice feed their cats. And instead, feed them like we do dogs, meal feed them. The number one problem I see with cats right now is obesity, where they get so fat they can't groom themselves. I've had two diabetics in in two weeks. And it's secondary to their their diet their their diet that they're on and the fact that they're overweight and arthritis. So don't leave the food out. Don't leave it out. Feed them the amount of calories they need to be able to support their weight. They may not be happy, but you can live through it as an owner. Well, I, I know. I, I say that. <laughs> <laughs> Easy for you to say. Right. Um, and then the other for dogs is that they stay on year round internal parasite control, and by that I mean heartworm and intestinal parasite control, not only to keep them healthy in case you travel into warmer areas where mosquitoes are, but also to keep people healthy, because that's our job as pet owners, is to make sure that we keep our dog from spreading diseases that can affect people. So you're talking it's, the heart guard chewables. Well, the heart guard or, or the any of guard. the other brands, right? And then also flea and tick control. We've seen so many flea cases in now, recently. Really? Yeah, because they're ones that people picked up in the fall uh, and their pets brought in, and now they're still having troubles with it, even though it's winter time. Yeah, even the winter doesn't kill off everything. It we're, does we're, it. Just, we're just talking about it, it just yeah. before you came up. All right, let's go to the phones. We'll start with Colin in Oxford. Hi, Colin. Um, Col hi, I was wondering if it's um, safe. I was wondering if it is safe for. Um, pets to sleep on their stomach. I know it's not safe for humans, but is it bad for their health? Not at all. It really kind of depends on what's comfortable for the pet. Some pets prefer to sleep in certain positions because they can breathe easier. I have bulldogs at home, and as a result, um, they like to sleep sometimes on their stomach with their head propped up on something so they can breathe a little bit easier. So it's really whatever position they're in. I think what you're getting confused about is with human infants. With babies. And it's really not that much of a problem for pets. Yeah, my lab sleeps on his back sometimes, but he thinks he's a human. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. Sprawled out, yeah, snoring balls. away. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like me. <laughs> All right, let's go to Joe in Merrimack. Hi, Joe, what's your question? Uh, I'm wondering what... Go ahead. I am wondering what your suggestion is on uh, cat foods with no yeah. grain. Well, for feeding pets, um, it really is going to depend on the body condition that your pet is in as to whether you need to go with something that's going to be a lower calorie food or something that's a normal calorie food. We also have to consider any health <laughs> conditions that the pet may have as well. And so um, those are all things that your veterinarian could help you with to be able to choose an appropriate diet. Uh, <laughs> our phone is on the We have okay. some very highly advanced methods. Look at this thing. thing that's here. All right, we it's can. It's just beeping. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not working. Either. All right. But, but the big but, thing with cats is making sure that you're feeding them a high protein food because they're carnivores yeah. and a low carbohydrate food for that reason. And so some of the grain free diets are actually pretty good for cats. Not as much for dogs, but for cats, it really does make sense. All right, this thing came back to life. Let's okay. go to Janelle in Clinton. <laughs> Hi, what's your question? Hi, I have a problem. Uh, my 13-month-old Newfoundland is losing some patches of hair, and he, she gnaws at the spot, but there's no sores, but the hair is just spinning in that spot, and I didn't know what I should do to treat that. Well, the fact that she is itchy, I would be recommending that you take your dog to your veterinarian to have these skin areas checked. One of the big problems that we can see, especially in younger dogs, is things like bacterial infections, yeast infections, and some mites. There's one that's called Demodex that lives down in the hair follicles and can cause hair loss. And it's very simple to sometimes get a diagnosis by doing some skin scrapings where we look under the microscope for either parasites or we stain the slide to look for organisms. So, Home treatment, I really can't recommend it because there's so many different shampoos and things that are out there and you may just be prolonging something that could be treated very, very easily. And even like this, the mites that we're seeing now, things like Demodex, very easy to treat with some of the oral flea products. Like you mentioned Nexgard earlier, mm -hmm. Simperica or Brevecto. 
an oral pill now mm -hmm. rather than having to use smelly dips or anything else like yeah, that. We had a friend that had some similar issue. Their dog loses some hair, went to the vet, simple fix, right. and they were good to go. There you go. You know, yeah. And it stays so warm now that, you know, fleas are still active. And yeah. fleas are still out there. And it could be something as simple as, yes, you've got fleas in your home because mm -hmm. we're able to find them and you may not be able to at home. All right. We are Good out stuff. of time. Thanks for everyone for calling in. We'll get a new phone for okay. the new year. Oh, that <laughs> that that. Happy great. New Year. Yeah, Thanks, Thank Andy. you.